This is Transfer Talk. What a window it has been so far. And we have breaking news for you this afternoon from Tottenham. Plus, the champions Manchester City are the latest club to spend big, with Josko Vardial set to join in the coming days. We're live to the club's training ground in a few moments' time. Also this hour, Newcastle are adding to their squad with Tino Liveramento on the verge of joining. We'll hear from Eddie Howe shortly. £100 million and not a penny less. Brighton's stance is clear with the club believing nobody will match their asking price in this transfer window for Moise Caicedo. We'll discuss his future and more. A very good afternoon to those watching on the Sky Sports News YouTube channel and to our panel this afternoon. We have Harriet Pryor, Dan Bardell and Kwaku Afari. Let's tell you about the breaking transfer news, though, this afternoon. Tottenham are in advance talks with Wolfsburg over the transfer of defender Mickey van der Ven, an initial fee of £34.5 million, rising to a potential £43 million is on the verge now of being agreed between the clubs. Once that deal is finalised, he's expected to travel to the UK to undergo a medical. The players understood to be very, very keen on the move. So, how excited will Tottenham be about getting this player if they can get it done? Very excited. They're desperate for some signings at centre-back, aren't they? And he fits the bill, absolutely. Dan has been telling us that he's the quickest defender in the Bundesliga. He enjoyed that stat. And it's really that pace that I think Angel Stoglu will be looking for. He likes to play in a 4-3-3 system. He likes defenders that are willing to take a bit of a risk and play out from the back. He's very good at the ball with his feet, but we know that if he makes a mistake, he's really got that recovery pace to come back. He's left-footed as well. He's got that versatility. He can play at full-back and at the heart of the midfield. And if they're looking to strengthen in that area, I don't think you're going to have get many defenders at that price point which I think is really good for a defender of his quality and with his potential to come in so yeah they'll be very excited about this one and just hope that they can get maybe him and another one through the door because it's really been that position they've been targeting since the start of the window Yeah interesting you talk about the price point there we'll talk a bit more about Mickey van der Ven later and if Tottenham fans want to get in touch they can do join the conversation with hashtag transfer talk we'll talk more then about Mickey van der Ven later but let's get to Manchester City now as they get closer to announcing the signing of defence Defender Josko Vardiol. We can go live now to Manchester and speak to our reporter Ben Ransom. Uh, ben, good afternoon. You'll be speaking to Pep shortly ahead of this Community Shield. No doubt, though, a lot of questions will be about their new incoming. Absolutely. I mean, what a player that is coming through the door. This is already one of the best defenders in the world and someone who's tipped to be the best defender over the next few years as he develops. Still just 21, Josko Vardiol, which is remarkable when you consider what he's done at the top of level of football already in the Champions League and at the World Cup as well where he turned a few heads with some of those performances for Croatia. A player who is seen as someone that can get better and better, a player of huge technical ability. When you talk about seamlessly coming into a Manchester City side, he seems like he's got all the attributes to fit straight in. So good on the ball, good in dangerous situations, progressive with his passing, likes to play forward as well, which is something that Pep uh, really does rate his defenders to do, particularly with this new shape where he's been playing four central defenders almost across the back line with some of them coming in to invert like John Stones and Nathan Ake up from the left back as well. So left-sided, left, foot, left so you'd imagine he would offer competition for Ake, but what a coup for City. £77.6 million, pounds, which once you factor in the exchange rates, €90 million. Euros. So he won't quite be the world's most expensive defender. That honour will still be held by Harry Maguire. Not far short, though, and City's second most expensive summer signing as well. So he's been having his medical, he's in Manchester, and the club are expecting to have this deal confirmed before they kick off against Arsenal at Wembley in the Community Shield this weekend. Well, that certainly will be a boost for Manchester City and their supporters if they can get that done before at the Arsenal game. A lot of competition for places. You touched on it there now in that defence mm. for Pep Guardiola to choose from. Could that see players potentially already there now on the move? Well, all summer we've been speculating as to whether Eimerick Laporte specifically has played his last game for Manchester City. Been interest, I'm told, but no bids for him. And as someone pointed out to me today, unless a bid comes in, a player can't leave. So it's up to Laporte to decide whether he wants to obviously stay and fight for his place because he's been an integral part of this City team under Guardiola, which has had so much success, not just last season when they won the treble, but in previous seasons as well. He did fall down the pecking order, though, last season, didn't he, Emmerich Laporte? And he became essentially City's fifth-choice central defender, playing almost coming in to give other players a rest. So perhaps it feels like if 
the right offer comes in, he could be one out the door. And another player that I don't think many expected to be back here for pre-season is Jao Cancelo. Went off to Bayern Munich. He stunned us all with that January transfer. I don't think anyone expected to see him back here in a City shirt, but he's been playing a bit in pre-season. He is part of the City squad. And But again, you would imagine there's talk, isn't there, that clubs are already looking at him. Potentially, he's someone that could move uh, before the window because otherwise City defensively have... So many options, particularly at centre-back. That would be six once Guardiola comes in. That feels like too many to carry. Pep likes a fairly tight-knit squad. He likes players to be involved. And a player I've not mentioned yet is Kyle Walker. Again, lots of noise, what, about a week, ten days ago, about potentially that move to Bayern Munich. It's all gone a little bit quiet on that front as well. So until City know what Kyle Walker's going to do as well, that could also play into the decision-making process as to how many others are allowed to leave. And what about incomings then? If and when Vardial gets confirmed, can you expect to see another incoming or two incomings at Manchester City or are they finished now? No, I think specifically we would expect a right winger or certainly someone that can play on either flank to come in, an attacking player. Because let's not forget, as much as Gundogan went and they, and they replaced him with Mateo Kovacic, Riyad Mahrez's departure for Saudi Arabia does leave a bit of a hole on that right flank. Now, there's always speculation about Bernardo Silva's future. It feels like uh, he's been the one player that, although City and Guardiola always say, look, if a player wants to leave, they can. Bernardo Silva seems to be the one exception to that rule because I know uh, certainly he has thought about uh, moving on to uh, a new club at different points in the last couple of years. But so far, the offer's not been there. City have not had a, an offer acceptable. And so Bernardo Silva, one of the best servants, most loyal servants to City over the last few years. And also the fact that he can play in such a number of positions across that front line. But in terms of that right flank, they've got Bernardo Silva and Phil Foden, who I suppose uh, has played there, could play there again. That's the one hole in the squad. So it's my information that a right wing is the one area where City will look to strengthen before the transfer window closes. A name that's been mentioned is Michael Elise, obviously players, uh, player of the season at Crystal Palace last year, 21 years old. He got better again, took a big step, didn't he? And he would be available for around £35 million, we understand, which, if you think about it, is pretty much the fee that City raked in when they sold Riyad Mahrez to Saudi Arabia. So I would expect an attacking player to come in, most likely someone that can play on that right-hand side. City will have a list of targets, and they'll be looking to try and do that one, get that one over the line uh, before the window closes, as I say, at the end of the month. We will see what Pep has to say. Ben, thank you very much. That news conference coming up here on Sky Sports News a little bit later on ahead of Manchester City's game with Arsenal on Sunday then. So let's talk a little bit about Manchester City. Uh, and Ben touched on it there, the, the players that potentially could leave the club. Does that have an impact maybe on the starting eleven for the game against Arsenal? Do we read anything into that team selection for this weekend? Um, you can do. A lot of people falsely read too much into the team section for last year's Community Shield and, and wrote City off and wrote Erlen Haaland off and we saw what happened. So Community Shield is it's the, it's the annual curtain raiser and it's, um, it's a glorified pre-season game despite the fact that there is a trophy to be won. Uh, it's a chance for players to get minutes in their legs. But Man City did go very strong last year against Liverpool. Um, if you look at it, all their starters played... Erlen Haaland started, Kevin De Bruyne started, Jack Grealish started. So they did go very strong. So it can give you some indication in terms of what Guardiola wants to do next season. But we know that Vardyol, it will be too early for him to start. And he's obviously going to have a big part to play in this upcoming season for Man City. So the, the starting lineup does give you some indication in terms of what they're going to do for this upcoming season. But you can't read too much into the Community Shield game. A right-sided forward, Ben mentioned there, after the departure of Riyad Mahrez. Is that an area that you think they'll be looking to strengthen? Yeah, they've, they've got to replace Mahrez. Man City are operating on, a, on the smaller side, actually, with squad, which sounds ridiculous with their riches. But in terms of bodies, I'd say Man City, they operate with, with, with quite a, a small sample size. So I think they'll need to replace Mahrez, even though he wasn't in their best team towards the end of the season, didn't start the Champions League final he still would have chipped in with a hell of a lot of goals and assists. So, Mahrez will need replacing. They brought Kovacic in, but I think believe they were planning to do that regardless mm -hmm. of what happened with Gundogan. So, there could be an argument made that they need another central player to come in as well. You'd expect to see more from Calvin Phillips this season. But the way he's got that defence set, that could, it just gives them so much flexibility. Ben mentioned there they've got six centre-backs and that's perhaps too much. You could see four or five of them playing at the same time with the, with the way they operate now. 
having all those centre backs on the pitch has actually unlocked Haaland further as well and unlocked the way they play with him. So it wouldn't surprise me actually if they did keep six centre halves because they could lose a couple of full backs. But they showed last season they don't always need a full back. No. Um, well, let's talk a little bit more about potential outgoing and outgoing at Manchester City. Uh, we can get to Madrid and speak to Spanish football expert Fernando Callas. Fernando, very good afternoon to you. Um, João Cancelo reports linking him with Barcelona. Uh, what are you hearing on that from? Yeah, the, the word that comes out from the club is that the, the player and the club, they already have an agreement. But the thing is that Barcelona, their, their financial struggles in the last few years, they're already well known all over the football world. So they are struggling to get a deal. They don't know it's going to, if, if it's going to be a loan, if it's going to be like a... Uh, proper transfer. So now they're just struggling, negotiating. Uh, the player wants to come. Xavi wants him. Uh, Barcelona, it's in dire straits with uh, fullbacks, mainly on the right side. They've been improvising uh, Araujo and Koundé as a, as a right fullback. So Cancelo that could be, that could play in both uh, flanks. He could be the, the perfect fit for Barcelona right now. Well, I guess Barcelona might be able to get some money in with the sale of Usman Dembele. Um, how's that gone down over uh, with Barcelona supporters, this potential move to PSG for Usman Dembele? Yeah, it's they they get they, they're not going to get but too much money. That's the biggest problem. You have to remember that uh, Usman Dembele, he was one of the players that arrived after Neymar left to Paris Saint-Germain for 220 million euros. And he cost uh, 140 million euros for Barcelona. It wasn't a very successful player until last season when Xavi managed to, to recover him. And then we saw this last season, finally he, you know, like flourishing with the potential that, we, that Barcelona expected when they, they signed him for a lot of money. It's 140 million euros. And now, but the thing is that they renewed his contract last season with this clause that was the release clause. It was 50 million euros. And half of that was going to go to the player. So now Barcelona, uh, uh, the, the player already left Barcelona. He's in his way to, to Paris to sign with Paris Saint-Germain for 50 million euros. But half of this money is going to go to the player. So Barcelona is losing a key player, uh, one of the best wingers in, in football right now, for only 25 million euros uh, for the club. You know, it's just, it's a disaster. A lot of people will question the, the release clause that Dembele had and, and why it was put in. Was it simply because of the financial situation at Barcelona and they had to do what, what they had to do, really, in order to keep him. Yeah, and, and because of Dembélé, too, because he wasn't successful. He only played in all these years, he only played 60% of the games, several injuries, lots of, I don't know, uh, commitment issues with him and the club, um, problems with coaches with inside the changing room. So... Uh, so they signed this player. They, 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 it, it's, it's good to remember, it wasn't a resign. He, he didn't renew his contract. His, his contract expired last season. He didn't have any offers, like proper offers. And then Xavi just convinced him to, to, to sign this, uh, like, prove me deal. And now that he proved, he, he's leaving and Xavi is really disappointed. He said that publicly. The fans, they are disappointed, but he's heading home. So... Dembele going to PSG, a player potentially leaving PSG, although we're not quite sure from day to day what's going to happen with Kylian Mbappe. Any noise from Real Madrid that they might come in for him at all this summer? Well, there, is, there has been a lull in activity in the last few weeks here in Madrid. It's too quiet too quiet <laughs> in a situation like this when it's too quiet it's because everybody is, feels like stepping in eggs it's just a delicate situation between the player and the club between real madrid and the player between real madrid and paris saint germain so i think that i don't know real madrid is being really tight-lipped right now there is no leaks about their interests and about their negotiations if there is any negotiations we don't know and people here in Madrid, I have to be honest with you, they're not getting their hopes up because of what, last, what happened last season. He could have arrived in a free transfer last season and he decided to renew with Paris Saint-Germain. So now people 
are just really skittish. They don't know what to expect. They don't they don't want to have really high hopes for him arriving now. But as the situation is being unfolding, it's just I don't see any other option or either he stays or he comes to Real Madrid. So but right now it's really, really, really quiet here in Madrid. OK, we'll wait and see on that one. And I want to ask you about Joao Felix as well. His future very much up in the air at Atletico Madrid. Just give us an idea of his situation uh, at Atletico and what his future might hold. Well, he's the only player in Atletico Madrid's squad that didn't play. They didn't play a single minute in the preseason games, you know, in, the, in their trip to Asia and North America. And he said publicly that he his child dream was go, uh, was playing in Barcelona. And then, like hours later, the Barcelona media they published saying that Xavi was uh, like didn't want <laughs> Joao Felix. So now. We are talking about uh, a player that costed 120 millions to Atletico Madrid, and that uh, Diego Simeone doesn't want him uh, clearly. And there is all the major clubs; they are not; they they didn't show real interest in a player. So it was a big failure. His uh, experience in Chelsea last season. Now Barcelona close is are closing their doors for him. Uh, I don't I, actually right now it's a deadlock. We don't know what is going to happen with João Felix because there is no clear path for him leaving the club, and I don't see him playing for Simeone either. Fernando, thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. My pleasure. On the way next here on Transfer Talk, Eddie Howe and Newcastle back in the market and have a new defender on the way to the club. We'll hear from Howe in a couple of minutes.
Welcome back to Transfer Talk. Tottenham are in advanced talks with Wolfsburg over the transfer of defender Mickey van der Ven. This news breaking in the last hour. An initial fee of £34.5 million rising to a potential £43 million is on the verge of being agreed between the clubs. Once the deal is finalised, he's expected to travel to the UK to undergo a medical. Tottenham have been after centre-backs or window and he's been one of their prime targets. Yeah, this is a really good signing for Spurs. I think the Spurs fans will be delighted that a centre-back's come in. That's one they've been crying out for all window. Obviously not happy with the way that the team was defending last season and entering now a, a more expansive phase under Posta Coglu. It's important that they get the centre-back position right and I, I think this guy is, is the right kind of signing. He's absolutely rapid. Clocks as the fastest centre-back in the Bundesliga last season. I think with the high line that Posta Coglu plays... His recovery pace is going to be really, really important. Left-footed as well, which offers balance. You'd imagine for now he's going to partner Christ Christian Romero. And Romero aside, probably the other centre-backs at Spurs or the people that have been playing centre-back, not really fit for purpose for, for what Postacoglu wants to do. So this is a this is a really important signing. A, a player who's been labelled the next Virgil van Dijk in, in some quarter. So if you've been labelled the next Virgil van Dijk, you must be doing something right. And I think this is just a sign now that Spurs are... Not going back to basics, but going back to what made them successful a few years ago under Pochettino. Targeting players who've played in Europe who are young and have got room to grow, but have also got a hell of a lot of appearances in the bank already. So I think this is a, a really clever signing from Spurs and, and one of the, as I say, the Spurs fans will be absolutely delighted with this news. Signals that the manager's really being backed as well, doesn't it? If they do manage to get this player in for the fee that's being spoken about, that would take their spending this summer to around £126 million, which shows that there is a lot of work to be done and a lot of Tottenham fans would have spoken about that at the start of summer. With a new manager, there's always going to be a period of transition, there's going to be a rebuild, but particularly in this case because Conte was used to playing with more of a back three system, he likes playing with wing-backs. Postacoglu, as we've just mentioned there, plays with more of a 4-3-3. Getting players in now that fit that new system, that fit the mould, that have the attributes that are going to be successful under how a new manager wants to play is key. Otherwise, they're going to keep being in a phase Tottenham where they're rebuilding season after season. They need to be planning for the future. And at just 22 years old, he's a player that could potentially have the best years of his career at Tottenham if he does well. You said about him about fitting the system, but it's also him being mouldable, him being young. And yeah. you were right to point out the back three that Conte played, but that's also what Nuno played and Jose at points was playing the back three. So... The players at Spurs or centre-back to Spurs are very used to a certain system and to unlearn that's quite difficult. So it's understandable why Postacoglu is targeting a young centre-back that has played in the back four and is also mouldable and can learn his system. So the move makes sense for all parties and Spurs fans will be delighted because they need and they're crying out for a centre-back. There's been a real focus as well, this transfer window, not just from Tottenham, but from across all clubs to bring in players that are really versatile. That key word, versatility, has been something we've spoken about so much. And bringing in a defender when you are in this period of transition, who can play at centre -back? Back, who can also play at left back, who can play in a few different positions, is absolutely invaluable. OK, Tottenham fans, uh, have your say. Hashtag transfer talk. Let's talk Newcastle now. They're set to add Southampton defender Tino Livramento to fellow summer signings Harvey Barnes and Sandro Tonali. They've agreed a £32 million fee. Uh, Southampton, though, satisfied that they have received their valuation of Livramento in a package they believe could rise to £40 million. We spoke to Eddie Howe a little earlier today. He had this to say in his news conference. I'm not. I'm slightly in the dark on that, unfortunately. So... Um... Let's wait and see what happens in the next couple of days, but um, certainly I like the play. You said you were slightly in the dark about Tino, um, but he's a player who's had a, a serious ACL injury. How, how concerned as a manager are you when, when you, you link with a player like that who's had such a, a bad injury like that? Without talking directly about Tino, just, just on the general subject of your question, I think that's why we do thorough medicals and you know that will be down to... Um, that aspect of the, the football club to make sure any player that we sign is in good physical condition. How difficult is your man management job now? Because as more and more players come in, you can only play 11, obviously. Is, is that becoming a, a difficult decision this season now as to who gets the start? I don't think we have a, a, a bigger squad than last year. If anything, we have maybe at this moment in time a leaner squad. So I don't think necessarily that's a, a problem. We've got more games. So hopefully everyone should feel more involved with more opportunities to play. If, you, if your squad numbers are slightly concerning and you've got Champions League football as well, are you going to have to do a little bit more shopping in the next couple of weeks? Is that a priority? Uh, no, I, I said leaner. I didn't say um, there's sort of a, a negative connotation to that. We, we don't want to carry a huge squad. and We want everyone in the squad to feel like they have a part to play. 
Um, but certainly we do have um, the various competitions that we're involved in and so we need to be robust enough to deal with that challenge. Um, let, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, I think maximum a couple of players, but uh, let's wait and see. He never gives too much away on signings, Eddie Howe, uh, but he did say that he liked Tino Livramento, which is a start, I suppose, if, you, if you're on the verge of signing him. Um, does he fit the mould of an Eddie Howe signing, Tino Livramento? It's as much as you're going to get from Howe, <laughs> just, isn't that's it? That's it. He likes him. That's good <laughs> enough, isn't it? There's been a real focus since Howe's come in to bring in players that aren't necessarily the biggest names for the biggest wages, but that are really focused on good attributes, good characteristics and good attitude is another thing that you've really noticed from Newcastle signings recently. I, we were looking at them earlier and they kind of fall into two camps only. We can have a look at some of the players they've signed now. They've brought in players that are a little bit older, a little bit more experienced. Trippier, Chris Woods, Dan Byrne, Target as well. And then there's been the other side of things where they've been planning for the future and we can look here as well. And they've brought in a few younger players, Anthony Gordon, Isaac as well. So there's a real mix of excitement and a real mix of experience in there as well. This player would definitely fit into the camp of the, the younger player with more potential. He's not got a, a load of experience. He has also had an ACL injury. That might be something that the the squad that Eddie Howe's a little bit concerned about. However, he's a really good carrier of the ball. He's very good in transition as well. He'd offer something very different to this Newcastle side. So it would definitely fit the mould of a signing. And it would add to that squad depth as well in a season where they're going to be playing Champions League football. They went far in comp competitions last season. The Premier League as well. They will want to be competing for top four again. So very good in terms of adding squad depth and a player with a lot of potential as well. A lot of young players on that list from uh, signed, signed by Newcastle. Uh, I guess Dan Ashworth probably has a lot to do with that as they target some of the best young players around the country and around the world as well. So a lot of money spent by Newcastle, but it looks like that's going to continue with uh, Tino Livramento as they edge closer to signing him. Still to come here on Transfer Talk, there's been an incoming at Chelsea this morning. We broke it for you on Good Morning Transfers. Big money spent on a defender. Will they stop there, though? We'll discuss that next.
this moment. Welcome back. Let's take you live to Manchester to hear from Pep Guardiola ahead of the Community Shield against Arsenal on Sunday. New one, especially this Community Shield, the last three years we played, but against Sevilla and in next weeks and and. Uh, in Saudi Arabia in the winter time, so give you opportunity to play it once we are there. Of course, we're going to try. Now, I know how we are right now, the situation that we are. So we finish two weeks later than Arsenal. We start two weeks later than Arsenal. So we are not in the best, best way. Always we we struggle to restart every season. But it's a final. And hopefully, our mentality can help us to be there and. And compete like we have to compete against them and try to yeah to win the title. You talk about mentality. Have you achieved something as historic as you achieved last season? What are you looking for in the players to make sure they they still have that edge to go again this year? I would say that I don't know. I would say we are going to see, but at the same time, every preseason always when we won the quadruple or we won the Premier League in a row, two, three times always we think, ah, the players will be dropped, the players will not be ready and the players were ready and everyone was ready uh, I think will be highs and lows, I think my feeling for experience in the first part of the season have to try to avoid to drop too much to don't let the opponents, especially in the Premier League or in the first stages in the Champions League you know Run away, uh, but uh, in terms of that I know, except Matteo that arrived, the, the other peoples I know them quite well, and I know, I know they are incredible competitors, and we will push each other, we will challenge each other, and I'm, I'm sure that we will be there. Can I just ask you about the situation with Guardiola and also Kyle Walker and Bernardo Silva? That there's been a lot of talk about those two maybe leaving. Well, regarding uh, Guardiol, what a beautiful surname he has. Um, regarding him, uh, he's a, doing a medical test, so everybody knows that he's here and hopefully we can finish the deal in the next hours, next days. And, uh, and regarding uh, Kyle and, and Bernardo, what could I say? So... They are so important player for us. We want him yes, yes or yes. We are going to do everything to. Of course, he is not like Gundo, like finish the contract. He has contract, so. But we want him to stay because he want to stay, uh, and yeah, we will do everything because replace these two players uh, is so so difficult. We lost two incredible players for us. Like Ilka and Riyad, like in the last seasons, were massively important, incredible goals, assists, and personalities in the biggest stages and big important games. And lose Kyle and Bernardo will be so difficult, and that's why we are going to 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 do everything, to, you know, to 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 keep them, and because they want, you know, because they want really, 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 really be here. Um, from your perspective, Radio, what will you bring to, to Manchester City? Let me, it's medical test, so let's finish. When it's done, I will give my opinion. Um, are you done? If, if Radio comes in, are you done in the trans, transfer market? Is that City's business done? Or is uh, I don't know. I think it's going to move something. Yeah, it's not yet. Right. Season started today. I mean, it starts on Sunday really for City. Are they ready? Are they ready to go? Are you happy with everything? I'm happy for everything, yeah, definitely. But uh, what I said before, still we need, like I think all the teams, not just Man City. But the, the reality in this period, one week of work helps a lot, but we cannot forget it's 11 mount, so start to don't get injured and at training sessions, day by day, weeks by weeks, and Game by games, the players will will get the, what we need. Uh, I um, can I pick up on Guardiola coming in? Because assuming the medical goes well on this side. Assuming. Assuming. Yeah. W wait. I'll call Guardiola, and I promise you. So, but not now because I'm not allowed to do it for the club. So, that's the point. Be, 
assuming he comes in, that will give you six central defenders. The season, the season is so long, so there's that's, many, many games. That's not too many to have. No, absolutely not. And picking up on what Simon was asking about Bernardo Silva as well, because it feels like it's been a lot of summers. I think it's three in a row now where we've had to talk about his future, his reported interest. Do you, do you, as with other players, have a gentleman's agreement with him that if an offer comes in, for the day one, yeah, for, I want to clarify that because I know the reports from Barcelona make my word what I said. I said for the day one until the end, I don't want any player that I want to be here. So, but but uh, I am an employee. This is my opinion. I want to work with the guys, like I want to stay, or my decisions, I want to work with the staff or back with my staff or the players. But after that, we had to get an offer. We didn't get an offer, a proper offer. I would say I didn't get an offer. So that's why, what could I say? It's our play, we want him. And if they want it, they will take a plane, they will come here, they will talk with our sport director, with CEO, to arrive in agreement because both parts or three parts, they have to be even not for the wish, I give the word, it's over. So when we want to go everywhere to buy a player, just for Man City, it's 10, 15 million pounds more expensive than the other clubs. All the time it's like that. So. And the same guys, when they want to play as important players for him, but they are really, really important players, first they have to, you know, to make an offer. And it didn't happen. They want to happen, it's going to stay, and we fight to extend the contract to be to be with us. It's simple as that. All the players happen since they won. Guardiola talking live there in Manchester ahead of the Community Shield. Some interesting stuff coming out of that news conference there, saying that uh, they weren't really done yet in the transfer market and they may well move for another player before the end of the window. Confirms the news that we've been talking about here on Sky Sports News, that Josko Vardial is having a medical right now, so they're expecting that deal to go through. Also talked very passionately about Kyle Walker and Bernardo Silva, saying that he wanted both of those players to stay. Reference the fact that they've lost two incredible players in this transfer window, uh, talking about Ilkay Gundogan and Riyad Mahrez, and saying that uh, Kyle Walker and Bernardo Silva are key players for him and that he wants them to stay. So Pep Guardiola there talking live ahead of the Community Shield. Um, let's return to Tottenham because there's news reaching us here on Transfer Talk. Chief Football Correspondent for the Daily Telegraph, Jason Burt, is reporting this afternoon that Bayern Munich have set a deadline of midnight tonight for Tottenham to agree to sell Harry Kane. Further to that, the England manager Gareth Southgate has been talking on national radio today. Some interesting quotes coming out from that interview, which we'll talk about in a moment. But firstly, on this, this Kane deadline, Jason Burt also does say that there is cautious optimism that a, a deal will get sorted out between the clubs. But setting a deadline for this, it seems like this transfer hasn't moved for a few days, but it now could accelerate pretty quickly, right? There's always been cautious optimism from the Bayern Munich camp, it seems, when it comes to this transfer. Harry Kane himself seemed to set a deadline and said, if I'm still playing for Tottenham at the start of the Premier League season, that is where I'll be playing my football. That is less than two weeks away now. Well, two, yeah, two weeks away. And I feel like Bayern Munich now are just moving the deadline a little bit closer and saying, Tottenham, we want to agree something here. They really know that Tottenham do not want to be in a position next summer where Harry Kane can go to any club in the world. He can go to any club in the Premier League. And not only that, but he can go for free. So Bayern Munich is saying, we know that Tottenham are going to be pushed here, but there is still that £20 million gap in valuation, according to latest reports. Have they got any closer to agreeing that? Have they got any closer to bringing that together? That's the key question. But if Bayern Munich are wanting this resolved by the end of the day, then it does feel like something is going to have to happen by, by the end of play. Does anyone actually want to get this deal done? Kane setting deadlines, Bayern setting deadlines, and Spurs don't want to sell Harry Kane. We want to get it done because we've talked about it enough in this show, but it seems like <laughs> it, it's moving towards an impasse where, where Harry Kane, obviously, for obvious reasons, wants to get his future sorted before the season starts. He's a professional footballer. He's got his own plans. Bayern Munich want to get the business done because the Bundesliga season, although it does start a week after the Premier League season starts, it's a, it's a deal that they want to get done pretty sharpish. And Thomas Tuchel has made it clear that he wants a number nine. And Tottenham and Daniel Levy don't want to be pushed in the corner. I've never heard it before. A team that wants a player so badly setting... The, a deadline to the to the potentially selling team. It doesn't make any sense to me. So this is an interesting one. Obviously, this story is going to develop further and further. And it, by the time we, we turn up to the new studio on Monday, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see if Harry Kane is going to become a Bayern Munich player or is he going to stay at Spurs. Well, if Jason Bird's right, then we'll know in less than 12 hours. So 
Yeah. We'll get to stop talking about and it. And we are, we are working on it ourselves here at Sky Sports News to try and find out the latest. What we do know and what we've been talking about this week is that Bayern are ready to break their transfer record for Harry Kane. They were looking at an offer around £85.5 million. Pounds. Um, Tottenham wanting considerably more than that if a deal was to be completed. So we'll find out a little bit more on that here on Sky Sports News. And just to go back to what we were talking about with uh, the England manager, Gareth Southgate, he was talking about the future of certain different players. He's captain Harry Kane, but also Jordan Henderson moving to Saudi Arabia. He told TalkSport today that it's not for me to dictate where they go, where they play. Uh, we'll assess where they are. We won't rule people out. We've never ruled anybody out because of the league they play in. Uh, we rule them out on the comparison with the other players in their position. So that is what Gareth Southgate has had to say on uh, Harry Kane, Jordan Henderson and lots of other issues today on national radio. Uh, we're looking ahead to the Scottish Premiership season uh, on the way next here. Uh, we'll be going to be talking to the Rangers manager, Michael Beale. This is Transfer Talk. We broke the news earlier this morning, if you missed it, on Good Morning Transfers, that Chelsea 
have signed Axel Tizazi from Monaco. The central defender has signed a six-year contract and moves for a fee of £38.6 million. He's given some quotes to the Chelsea website. He says, I like to have the ball at my feet and play passes. I like interceptions and I like to be aggressive with the opposition to use my physicality. He says he started out as an attacker and then moved back as a professional. I've played left back, right or left centre back or in a three and with the national team at the World Cup at right back. So he can do a bit of everything, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so versatile. And now when he was describing his own profile there, it sounds a bit like a defender we lost last season in Tony Rudiger. I think that's the profile or defender he's replacing at Chelsea. Um, he's aggressive, he's on the front foot, but he's also on the ball very comfortable. He's outlined that he played in different positions growing up. And when he sees a space, he'll travel into it, which I think is very important. It's different to what Chelsea have got in terms of starters. Levi Colwell and Thiago Silva are a little bit more stoic whereas he would be a little bit more adventurous. There's going to be a lot of heart and mouth moments for Chelsea fans. And you see his passing accuracy there. You see the statistics. He just looks like an all-round centre-back, and he, he's also got the leadership skills as well. He uh, captained Monaco multiple times last season. Um, and he's a player that is very impressive, and I outlined it before on the, the show we did previously. The fact that he is right-footed, and we've got now two right-footed centre-backs and two left-footed centre-backs of Chelsea, it just bodes well and it strikes a nice balance. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see him play for Chelsea and I think he's going to be, be a top player and eventually break into the Chelsea starting eleven. OK, thank you for the moment. The Scottish Premiership season gets underway this weekend. Rangers start away at Kilmarnock tomorrow and we can go live to the Rangers training ground now for more build-up. Mark Benstead is there for us. Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon. Yes, I certainly am. And I've been joined by the Rangers manager, Michael Beale, as well. Well, Michael, here we go again then. It's been a very busy summer for you in terms of transfers. That's where we should start. How pleased are you with what you've done? Nine new additions in. Well, delighted. You know, in the four positions, we lost Malik Tillman, Kent, Morelos and Cholak. Um, possibly Sakala in the coming days. So we've replaced them, obviously, with the four guys coming in. So we're actually a man less. But... Really excited with the new players that are coming, the energy and the motivation they bring and, and, and a lot of quality as well. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting started for real tomorrow. I was going to say managers will often mump and moan about the backing they get, but I guess you can have no complaints with the investment that's been put in, the support you've had during the summer to build a squad in, in your own image. Yeah, as soon as John Bennett took over from Douglas Park, there was honest conversations. Obviously, when I came back into the club about the turnover of the squad in the summer with a contract situation, we chose not to go there with two or three players to give us this opportunity to, to give the squad a new look. And, and we've done that. We've worked really hard. I think everyone can see that. We've, we've worked early and, and really hard in the background to go and meet these players and their families to, to speak to them about Rangers. And we're delighted to have them in. Uh, for the first game of the season. The, we still know that the, the window has a month to run, so there can be some twists and turns yet. Jose Cifuentes is the, the latest of those additions. What are you getting with him, and when can we see him pull on that shirt and contribute? Well, he trained for the first time with his new teammates today, so a well win for him. He's a, a shy boy, but when he gets on the pitch, you'll see a different... Uh, personality for sure. He'll go straight into the squad tomorrow and be available. He's been playing in the MLS from January down and two weeks ago he had played three games in a week. He's had a nice break in preparation for coming over so he'll get his first taste tomorrow afternoon. You mentioned Sakala's future could be up in the air. What about the rest of the players? There's a question mark about the likes of, of Kamara, the likes of Wright, maybe even Ben Davis as well. There's been a lot of interest in him. Yeah, there's been an interest in a few and you can see our squad is a big squad. So far I think for, we've had a player come in for every player that left, but the squad, as I mentioned at the end of last season, was big. So I expect two or three more to go out. It's Sakala and Kamara away from the group at the moment discussing some things. So there might be some news um, in the coming days. They won't be involved tomorrow. But other than that, uh, everybody else is, is ready to go. Do you have to strike a balance moving forward in terms of your Champions League squad now? Because you'll need to juggle a few players around to, to fit them in or maybe have to leave some out. Yeah, listen, it's uh, the it, excitement. It's a really tough draw against Savet. First thing, though, is, is one game at a time, and uh, Kilmarnock is where our focus is right now, and we'll deal with that from Monday. Uh, we've got uh, strength in depth at this moment in time, and lots of competition. So if we pick a team, there is yeah. a lot of players uh, on the side eager to get involved. So You've got your own players to work with season. now. You've also like got... Eight a full season to go. Is this where you get judged now? You can see this is where people would judge you fairly. 
I'm happy to be judged all the time from when I came in. I think it's a real club effort you can see with James Bisgrove sure? going into his new role, John Bennett coming in as a new chairman. We've really tried to refresh the squad. I think now in the coming windows after this, it will be a matter of sticking with, with the players we've got and building with this group. We've give ourselves so a platform West, West by lowering the age course. of the squad we'll and also bringing players in that got a real hunger and desire to no, be no, here no. To, yeah. to build some solid foundations and consistency. And that's what I want now for the club and for the fans is a consistent uh, performance on the pitch from, from some, some of the same faces. I spoke to one of those same faces, James Tavernier, this morning. He said defensively he wants you to be better again like you were in, of course, in the, the title winning season. Is that something you discussed as a group through the course of the summer? Yeah, of course. You know, It starts from the front of the pitch as well, our energy to go and press and get up to the ball. This league gives you loads of challenges and the different types of surfaces and the different types of opponent that you face and we'll have to be ready for everything that comes our way. But at the moment, it's one game at a time. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. I know Derek and his team are looking forward to it as well. It's, it's live on TV. It's everything you'd want for an opening game. And let's, let's put a foot forward in the right direction tomorrow evening. It's one of the things that you can do to be better this season, to not allow the gap to grow at the top, to keep the pressure on, to be in the mix. Well, it's, it's, all, it's all level at the moment, so uh, let's just take one game at a time. I think when I came into the club, obviously, we was in a difficult position in the league and our form was actually very, very good and our, our end points total was very good. Uh, so it, we know that the margin for error is small, uh, but let's just take one game at a time. Each season's different. This is a new group of players and we're highly motivated to get started. When you look at the group that you have assembled, does it feel to you as a group that could be champions, that could win the league? They'll have to prove that on the pitch. I think we all have. We've got a lot to prove as a team. Uh, with the new guys coming in, there's a bit of excitement. I understand that. But we've got everything to prove as a, as a team and a club this season. Michael, really appreciate your time. Best luck for the season ahead. Yeah, the thoughts there of the Rangers manager, Michael Beale. It all begins for his side tomorrow when they travel to Kilmarnock live on Sky Sports. It is live on Sky Sports. Five o'clock tomorrow, that game. Scottish Premiership countdown tonight. We'll have a full look ahead to the season here on Cheers, Sky guys, Sports thank you News that. at 6.30. That. that is live from Celtic Park. Just got time to wrap up who needs to do some business between now and the start of the season. I'm going to come to you first, Harriet, and who are you going to pick? Yeah, I've gone for West Ham. They're the only Premier League team so far not to make a signing. Obviously, sold Declan Rice, their captain, for upwards of 100 million. Usually, when teams do this kind of business, they like to bring in four or five players to replace the void that the outgoing player has left. They haven't done that yet. It's not for want of trying. They've gone after players like Harry Maguire, put a bid in, James Ward Prowse as well, Fulham's Polinia, they've had interest in. So, it's not for want of trying, just nothing's quite sticking just yet. And with a week away to the Premier League, they'll need to get moving on some of those targets pretty soon. And Wolves fans, very worried at the moment. Yeah, as it stands, I'd have them down as big candidates for a relegation dogfight. Still got that age-old problem that they've had for years now of not really having a genuine goal scorer in in the squad. They've only really signed players who were who were on loan last season. They've added Matt Doherty, who obviously left a few years ago. So their squad's not looking strong at the moment. I think they even need to buy a striker or back. Fabio Silva, who they've spent an awful lot of money on, who's been out on low. They've got to do something, though, because they're in serious danger at the moment. OK, Harriet, Dan, Kwaku, thank you very much. We're back Monday, remember, 9am for Good Morning Transfers. And Transfer Talk is every weekday as well, 12 o'clock here on Sky Sports News. Transfer show coming up 5 and 7 tonight. Enjoy the EFL season. The start is tonight, live on Sky Sports. And next, there's more from Pep Guardiola ahead of the Community Shield this weekend.